All right, Blues, it's Stephen here on Bleeding Horizon TV. And obviously, we've signed Gabriel Jesus and Marles Moreno. And I've been joined by Walter, obviously uh, one of our residents, and the one and only Tim Vickery, the kind of the, the, the word on South American football, uh, the, the man who stole the show at the BBC's uh, World Cup coverage during Brazil. Uh, thanks for coming on the show, Tim. How are you doing, mate? Are you okay? Yeah, very well. I hope that you're appreciating this suit that I've got on. I wore it a couple of days ago on Brazilian TV, and the presenter said, uh, he was kind of describing it for the audience, and he said it's it's kind of Man City blue, so it's I thought beautiful. it would be appropriate for today. Oh, that's that's the dedication to the craft that doesn't go missing. It's incredible, mate. Right, I just may as well start straight on uh, the point. We've signed these two South American wonder kids. It's obviously a vastly used term. But um, what is your I know what is your opinion on Gabriel Jesus and Marlos Moreno moving to City in general? Well, I think that these are, are two fantastically talented players. Really, really talented players. There's something that, if I can group them together just for a minute, there's something that worries me a little bit about both of them. And that's the age and how quickly it's all happening. Yeah. Uh, and Marlos Moreno, um, he had his, his serious first team debut. Uh, last September. So, you know, he hasn't been a, a first-team player for, for a year. Um, he's he's accomplished more in that time, I think, than, than Gabriel Jesus. Jesus made his debut a little bit earlier. But again, it's very, very early for him. When I first came to Brazil, it's 22 years ago now, I think about the players that I saw um, Roberto Carlos, for example, the left back, you yeah. know, and he was, I saw him in one, and you know, it wasn't until kind of early to mid 20s that that particular generation were moving to Europe. There were exceptions, but in the main, then the players moved later. And obviously, you know, we're dealing with human beings here, so it's yeah. not a case of one size fits all. You know, different things will work in, 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 in different cases. But in, in the case of both of these players, it is very, very early. And I think we've just had, really, I think, a cautionary tale with uh, Wellington Silva coming back to Brazilian football. He was bought by Arsenal uh, five or six years ago when he was 17. Now, at that time, he was getting a game here in Rio for Fluminense in Brazil's first division. And since then, you know, he's been loaned out here and loaned out there. And, you know, you, you, when you get loaned out, you go into a club that doesn't have a long-term interest in you. Um, it, you're at an age there, you know, where you're going through changes anyway. Yeah. In terms of footballers, that can be exacerbated by the fact that because they've been concentrating on their football, they can be quite young for their age. Because they haven't been going out and having the experiences that their contemporaries have been having. So, you know, a 19-year-old footballer can be a, a young 19-year-old. Yeah, definitely. And it's an age of changes anyway. <laughs> to go through those changes in, an, in another country, there is a risk element there, I think. Yeah. We're dealing with two hugely promising, hugely talented young players, but the, the the age thing and the lack of experience thing does worry me a little bit. Do you think it's a case then of the clubs look at the risk and the potential money that they could go for? Obviously, we looked at like the amount of money that Neymar allegedly went for to Barcelona and yeah. think it's worth getting them in quicker than rather than later because uh, obviously their value will explode um, if they reach anywhere near the level they could potentially do. So a City just trying to maybe get in before the deal becomes... Well, astronomical potentially. Oh, clearly, clearly, because uh, if you were to wait, I think City actually call it secondary scouting. If you were to wait, let's say Gabriel Jesus. Yeah. Lots of clubs have been int interested in him. Marlos Moreno, lots of clubs have been interested in him. You could wait until he goes to Europe, yeah. proves himself in European football, and then bring him in. It's On the one hand, it's less of a risk. But on the other, the transfer fee will be much, much higher. So if you get him in early, then you're paying less. Although in the case of City, perhaps money, you know, you've got money to spend. But that would seem to be the thinking. Rather than doing the secondary scouting of waiting them to come to Europe, get him, get him in early. And I suppose, and this is another worrying thing from the point of view of the players. For a club like Man City, all right. If he doesn't come off, it's, if it's all too soon, and, and like Wellington Silva, yeah. in five or six years' time, you know, they go back after not having really done anything. Well, fair enough, plenty more fish in the sea. But for the players concerned, this is the only career that they've got, and it's a short one. And once you lose momentum, it's, it can be very hard as a, as a footballer to, to pick that, that momentum up again. But clearly, the thing of getting in early means that you pay less. Yeah. Can I just uh, chip in and ask... Uh, 
We talked about grouping the players together, but if we break them down separately, what do you think each player actually could potentially bring if things work out to actually Manchester City? They're two similar players in a way, in that they're they're quick, um, skillful. They can play across the attacking line. Uh, I, I think long term, you might think of Gabriel Jesus as more of a centre forward, perhaps. Yeah. And he began his career uh, playing wide left, cutting in on. on uh, he's naturally right footed cutting in onto, the, onto his right foot. His career really took off as recently as March. That's, you know, Soon it's, it's yesterday, it. <laughs> really, when a new coach took over at his club, Palmeiras, and switched his position and said, you know, this player is dangerous. We want him close to goal. So rather than playing him wide on the left, he played him up front. So he didn't have to run back and chase back after the opposing centre forwards. You know, he's, he's, yeah. he's there close to goal. And he's just had... A very interesting recommendation. The great Ronaldo, the original yeah. Ronaldo, looks <laughs> the best at him and Ronaldo. says, "Yeah, he remind yeah the, the, the Ronaldo who hasn't played for Man United." That Ronaldo, <laughs> um, he, he's looking at looking at him and saying, "The young Gabriel Jesus reminds me a little bit of the young me." Um, so long term, perhaps you're thinking more of him as a as a as a centre forward. Yeah. Although he's he's, he's uh, he, he is. The young, slim Ronaldo, you know. And- yeah, he has the physicality potentially for the Premiership because obviously there's this whole thing about uh, young, slight. I mean, it's a bit of a cliche about some young South Americans maybe not adapting to the Premiership in general. And we've seen a little bit with Rubinho and Alano. But are these two, or particularly Gabriel Jesus, uh, are they cut from a similar cloth? Or is there more to them than that in terms of, I don't know, mentality and their adaption to the game? Well, this is a worry that I have with yeah. Gabriel Jesus. It's, uh, it, it's, it's a kind of twin worry. with, And the criteria that's used in Brazilian football is just that everything's a foul. Yeah. Difficult yeah. to adjust to. It's one of the problems I think that Robinho had, even though he came through Real Madrid, I think it's one of the problems maybe that, that he had when he came to Man City. Yeah. And uh, we were t- talking about him being a very young 19-year-old. He's got a lot of maturing to do. And at the moment... Every refereeing decision that goes against him is an existential crisis. Uh, he, looks, honestly, he, looks like he's going, he looks like he's going to cry when refereeing decisions go against him. So that's a worry. Got to toughen him up a little bit. You know, I mean, his, uh, he did, his team, Palmeiras, were in the Libertadores, which is South America's equivalent yeah. of the Champions League. They were knocked out in the, in, the, in the group phase, which for a Brazilian club is a disgrace. It's, you know, considering that the financial advantage that Brazilian clubs have over their continental rivals, to be knocked out in a group phase doesn't happen very often, and yeah. it's a disgrace. So it's an appalling, appalling performance. Now, he did well individually, but the vital game, uh, it was a way to Rosario Central of Argentina. It's the one they had to win, really, to stay alive. Yeah. They're losing 3-2. He gets himself sent off with a horrible foul, a horrible over-the-top foul where it's just a foul of a player who's lost his head. Yeah. So, you know, it, 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 with him, there's a lot of growing up still to do. There's a bit of that to Neymar as well, isn't there? Neymar has a little bit of impetuousness to his game as well. It's, yeah, it, exactly. And part of it is, is growing up spoiled. Yeah. Growing up spoilt in an environment where you're overprotected, perhaps, by, by the referee. In, in terms of, of, of Marlos Moreno, as a player, he also came into the team with Atletico Nacional in Colombia, wide on the left, yeah. cutting in onto his right foot. He has subsequently showed that he, uh, he's not really an out-and-out centre-forward. He has been kind of improvised there uh, once or twice, really because there was a time when his team didn't have any centre-forwards. But he, he's, he's more of a support striker, and he's capable of playing all across the attacking line. You can play him on both wings. Uh, you can play him through the middle as well, kind of yeah. off the main striker. Um, he, although he... He uh, came into first-team football a little, a little bit later than Gabriel Jesus. He's achieved more. Yeah. Uh, and his well, team... He's just won as as well, the Copa Libertadores. That's right, yeah. And it, but they won the Colombian League last December, and he was, he was key in that. It's a playoff system, the Colombian League. So you get last eight, and you get quarterfinals, semifinals, two-legged finals. So it's pressure games. And he, he came through very well with that. Um, was terrific 
in the Copa Libertadores, which uh, Atletico Nacional won, has also already got into the Colombian national team, more as a substitute than a... Yeah. Than a, than a, than a but he's made an impact. The thing I think that really stands out with him is not only his talent, elusive running and so on, it's his decision-making um, in the final third of the field. That is so impressive. That's good. Because, you know, you know, you know Raging Bull? The yeah, yeah, Raging yeah. Bull, the way that uh, you see things at times in slow motion through the eyes of the boxer, Jake LaMotta. The great <laughs> sportsman sees things in slow motion. Things yeah. seem to be happening slower, so he can, he can have the calm to pick his options. The sportsman who's been out fast sees everything in a blur. Everything's happening too quick for him. And what impresses me about Marlos Moreno is in that last third of the field, there's, there's, uh, there's, there's not too much panic, and he picks his options so well. Um, which makes him a player who's not only scoring goals, but he's also really good with the with the the, the assistance as well. And he's he's uh, got a step up to deal with now to to uh, La Liga in Spain. He's going to to La Coruña on loan. With those little doubts that we expressed earlier on about loans, you know, I've seen so many careers go off the rails with a loan because yeah. the club he's being loaned to have no, you know, it doesn't come off. They don't care. It's it, it, it's they don't have a long term stake in him. You could see towards the end of the Libertadores campaign that it, it was getting to him a little bit, you know, and he, he, he was very emotional when he was taken off towards the end of the final with the title already more or less won. Uh, very emotional there playing his last game for, for his, his, his club. Uh, and you could just see before, towards the end that that fact that he's travelled so far in such, in such a short time was getting to him a little bit. Yeah. So we'll have to see how, how he continues his progress, how he continues his, mo his momentum. But he's a player who excites me enormously. I was lucky enough to catch some of his early games and thought, wow. I saw your you know, reports, actually. About how you said he's the yeah. most exciting talent to emerge since from like yeah, since Neymar Aguero. I said that at, at the end of last year, you know, before you the mind? Libertadores. <laughs> uh, and uh, you know, in Lord knows, I've been wrong uh, many times. <laughs> Can I ask for another two hundred defences to be taken Have you into seen consideration? Our transfer record? Yeah. yeah, but this one, you know, it, it, the, the talent and the decision making and the ability to 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 produce under pressure, it was all there right from the start. So uh, I'm very very optimistic about him. Yeah, go on, Walter. No, I was just thinking for the youngsters there who haven't seen Raging Bull, I think it's more like the Matrix uh, for the next <laughs> generation, that slow motion. But, uh, I mean, I know what you're saying, this idea of uh, youngsters when they come over to Europe, it's almost like they get a big paycheck and it's time to almost get the Cuban cigar out and uh, the life tent can go off the rails. And I don't suppose you know any more about these individual characters that might tell us... Um, that they will hopefully stay on the rails at City. It, it, th this has been a problem, especially with Colombian players. Uh, <laughs> first big contract, forget about it. They're not, they're not the same afterwards. What I like about Marlos Moreno is in his, in his kind of quiet and not particularly pretentious way, I think there's a streak of arrogance about him. And that. I think yeah. that streak of arrogance is important in a, in a great player. And he said he's going to be better than, than Asprilla. Uh, who is a, a reference for Colombian players yeah, in I Europe. That. Uh, and when he said that, I thought, good on you, son. Good on <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, it's good news. Because that. far better that than the opposite. Yeah. Far better that than settling for less. <laughs> so providing he gets his first team opportunities, then uh, that, that with him is, is, is not too much of a worry. Um, with Gabriel Jesus, I think Robinho here is a is an excellent example because one of the problems, I think, with, with Jobinho, I remember him before he moved to, to Real Madrid when he was, he was still with Santos. Uh, and uh, a fellow, a guy called Casa Grande, he's a pundit for, for TV Global. He was a World Cup yeah. player for Brazil. He played the 86 World Cup. He said, I think Jobinho is going to be better than anyone who's ever played the game with the exception of Pelé. That was the expectation. <laughs> and then he comes to European football. He didn't actually do that badly oh, at the start. No, no. At no. And actually didn't do that badly at the start of, of, of Man City. Oh, okay. But I think one of the problems that he had 
was that he hadn't been prepared for the degree of difficulty that he was gonna he was gonna face in European club football. He hadn't been prepared for the fact that it's much harder than Brazilian club football, especially these days. And Brazilian club football is, is in a is in a bad bad way. It's in a really bad way. I and mean, we were saying earlier on about Palmeiras not getting out of the group phase. Yeah. Um, the record of Brazilian clubs in the last few years in, in the Libertadores is, is awful, terrible, and, and amazing, bearing in mind how much money they've got. Um, so it is going to be a step up. I mean, you hope that by now the penny has dropped a little bit. So in the case of Gabriel Jesus, he should know that. I mean, I he think, should know that it's yeah. not just a case of walking out there at, uh, at, at, uh, at the Etihad and automatically being able to reproduce what he's what what, what he's done with Palmeiras, uh, as I said as I said with him earlier on, that I do have a, a little doubt and a question mark about his temperament. It's going to be interesting to me to see how he reacts to adversity because in the long term there is no success without failure. No, this is true. I know uh, the Brazilian uh, FA tweeted out saying. Uh, Congratulations to Man City. We've got the jewel in their crown. Hmm. Now, I don't know if they do that for every player, but they, they certainly have hyped him up over there as well, as we were saying about Rubinho getting hyped up. Yeah, and he's uh, been top scorer in the Brazilian Championship. Um, and Palmeiras, who are selling him, um, but they're letting him go and play in the Olympics on, during the season. And can you imagine? <laughs> it's mad that, the isn't season, it? They're in contention for the Brazilian Championship. And they let their best player go. And political, all the Brazilian clubs have done that. They've all played ball. It's insanity, really. So, they, But it, it does mean, at least, that City fans will have a chance to see yeah. him yeah. during the Olympic tournament. Although you would expect the gap between Brazil and the opponents will be so big. Um, because Brazil are taking this very, very seriously. Yeah. The other teams have really struggled. I mean, Argentina came quite close to even not turning up because they just couldn't get a squad together. <laughs> but it will be, so it, it should be a victory procession, although there is pressure there to deal with. You know, remember yeah, how course. Brazil buckled under the pressure of playing at home in the World Cup two years ago. But it, that will be, I think, a good introduction for City fans to have a, have a look at Gabriel Jesus. Can I just ask you on a slightly... I mean, before 2008, before the takeover, I don't presume that Manchester City was a big name in South America... At what point do you think that City sort of exploded? I know that Brazilian or Brazilian homes actually get the Premiership beamed into their into their TVs. So I'm wondering, what point do you think that City became known as a big name player in South America? I think it was um, the uh, the uh, acquisition of Hobinho, which yeah. I actually I don't see it as a failure because there's another agenda apart from what yeah. he does on the field, and it was the big one that announced we are on the block. Oh, we are serious players. Definitely. Uh, and uh, so I think it was from that point. I mean, you're quite right. Before that point, uh, and the Premier League is very, very popular in Brazil. Yeah. Really popular. You even get the championship in Brazil. Bloody hell. <laughs> I met someone the other day. It's a true story. Middlesbrough who, massive in Sao Paulo. <laughs> well, yeah, and I met someone the other day who has a Grimsby Town t-shirt. <laughs> He's never been there. I don't think that shirt has ever seen a fish. Um, but he's, he got into English football and he looked on the internet. And, oh, I like that. That's the shirt I like. That's the team I'm going to follow, you know. Um, so it is huge. But until the, the, the Hobbino thing, prepare yourselves. There's no gentle way to say uh. this. Um, the, 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 the TV commentators would used to, re used to refer to United as Manchester. Yeah. As if there was only one club. That's no longer the case. And you see plenty of City <laughs> shirts We're aware of it. out, out in, the, uh, in, in, in the streets. And people like, I think people like, seem to like the colour. Do you remember, not the, Jun the Juninho who played for Middlesbrough, the other one who played for Lyon, the yeah. free kick specialist, Juninho yeah, Penabulcano. Yeah. Did a radio programme with him last year. And he was asking then about City. He was saying, why, why can't City do it? in the Champions League. Why haven't they done it in the Champions League yet? You know, they're a club that I really like. I really have a, have a you know, my, I don't know why it is. It might be the colour, but I really have a strong, I feel something for, for Manchester City. And he, he's, he's by no means the only one. So, uh, you know, the, 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 the club have become a, a big name player in, in South America. And I think that really started with the signing of Hobinho. Do you think this is why now we're seeing um, these young lads? Because traditionally, these, these South American wonder kids, so to speak, they tend to either head to like Barca or Real or maybe to someone like Shakhtar or Porto or Inter, you know, someone like that. And to be honest, for City in general, it hasn't been something that we tend to 
dabbled in really. It's not been an area of the market that we've really looked to approach for a long time. And I'm wondering if this is something to do with Guardiola, but or is City's um, reputation, as you said, in that area changing? But why are these players now willing to come to City as opposed to there was rumours that Barca, you know, were knocked back for uh, by Gabriel as well. But what is the change and what's caused that? Well, for a South American player, it's very difficult to say no if Real or, or, or Barcelona come yeah. in. Now, they, 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 their their yeah. cachet is still higher. Yeah. But there is that factor, Guardiola. And uh, it seems that Guardiola <laughs> phoned Gabriel Jesus. Uh, the Palmeiras coach, Cuca, was really not happy about that at yeah. all. I can imagine. But that's, <laughs> I, I, I did a TV show last week with a, with a midfielder for Flamengo, uh, William Aron. Uh, and you know, these these days they're part of a globalised generation, so they they've grown up with I don't know the Playstations or whatever it is. I'm too old for this. And his dream is to play in England. <laughs> so is Walter. <laughs> you know, he, he wants to play in England. Uh, unfortunately, and he said, you know, the top of the top for me would be Man would be Manchester United because he's got a thing about red. But and he said, you know, if Guardiola phones me up, I'm coming. You know, I've already, I've already booked. I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that that that's the the fact that Guardiola there, and I know that's been a dream of City for yeah. some time, yeah. and uh, the structure there was prepared, you know, with Begudistain and so on. It's prepared in order to to attract Guardiola, and Guardiola is clearly a thing for the long term, isn't it? Yeah. Because you know you, you're not expecting yeah. him in one one season to to perform miracles. Um, it's clearly a yeah. long term project that, that that the club have. So. Um, you add him into the, the glamour and the prestige that the Premier League has, the quality of the TV transmissions, the fact that the, the yeah. fans are close to, um, to, the, to, the, to the pitch, creating that, that atmosphere. And a, a TV, the, the English the Premier League is, is the one that all the TV executives here, that's the one that they want. And one of them he once told me, he said, uh, no, everything, the quality of the transmission, the, the shirts... Doesn't even matter if the game's crap. No, the, 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 from a TV point of view, the spectacle works. So you have that. You have the cachet of Man City. You have Guardiola. You put it all together, and uh, that's 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 powerful to uh, to attract South American players now. As long as you can get a work permit for them. Well, uh, apparently, the if the figures over ten million, a work permit is just guaranteed. Yeah. So it, it's, it's really interesting to me that the figure for Gabriel Jesus seems to be so much higher than the figure for Marlos Moreno. Yeah. Now, there's only one reason for that. Brazilian? That, that, well, yeah, exactly. That's yeah. the premium that you pay for buying a Brazilian because, and strictly speaking, Marlos Moreno has achieved much, much more, much more than Gabriel Jesus has. Yeah. That, that you, you, can't, you couldn't really understand why the fee might even be you know, four times higher. Um, but it's, it's, that, it's that one thing. It's the premium that you pay for buying a Brazilian. I mean, there's rumors as well that... Um uh, there's a there's a lot of kind of third party ownership. Is that right with these two players? Are they both kind of is, is there kind of is that was delaying the Moreno transfer? It might have already happened by the time people are watching this, but there's apparently rumours that City are trying to buy out certain parts of his contract or something like that with Moreno. Yeah, I, I'm not so sure with with Moreno. Oh, it's it? okay. certainly true with uh, with with Gabriel Jesus that he's uh, that you know, but this is absolutely standard practice. Yeah. Um, and it is something which which complicates the move because you've got to get all the parties you know around sitting together and there are moves to England which have fallen through for exactly that reason yeah. you you know you the, the players like a pizza slice and they couldn't get all the owners of the pizza to 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 agree on the terms of the deal. <laughs> um, just one one thing I want to ask as well is because um, he's obviously going to come over in January, uh, Gabriel and. Can you really see him? Does he expect then, or would you at least expect personally him to be involved straight away? Or are we going to see him maybe rest a little bit, but then look to push into the first team, or he's going to be a little bit more cautious in general in his integration? I wonder about January, because you'd expect Palmeiras to, to qualify for the Libertadores, yeah. um, which uh, they would certainly want to keep him for that. And that would end... By the end of the, you know, soon after the end of the season, kind of this time next year. Yeah. So you could do that, and then have him over for the year after. So I'm sure Palmeiras. That's what, in an ideal world, that's what Palmeiras would want. They'd, they'd want to keep him for for another year. Um, so that that that's up to to negotiations. Um, coming straight into the team, I don't really know. I, mean, I don't know what Guardiola is going to do with that yeah. team. Yeah. <laughs> no one does. Uh, yeah. <laughs> set up the team exactly, but you'd certainly think 
that you know over the next couple of years there'll be a fair number of players moving out and some have some have, have moved out already but you know when you look at that squad when he signed you're thinking who is he really going to like who is he really going to keep yeah and the the one that just jumps out is Sergio Aguero yeah. because man. you know even when he was at Barcelona Guardiola said Aguero is 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 Romario reborn. You know the great yeah, Romario, yeah. the great the, 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 the great Brazilian who in a short spell players. did so much at Barcelona. So you're thinking, well, that well that's his centre forward. That's that one sorted out. Um, Guardiola loves strikers in wide positions. Yeah, loves um, that. You know, you know, and so much of, of his Aguero? possession game is based on the creation of one against one situations. Yeah, you 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 keep the ball in order to suck in the opposition and then switch to a one against to a one against one situation on the flank so would that mean a move for gabriel jesus back back to the flanks would that mean that in the way that guardiola sets up his team with a high defensive line that wouldn't mean what it meant in brazil which was that when gabriel jesus was playing there he had a long way to, to follow back the opposing fullback the way that Guardiola sets up his team, he wouldn't do that. And look, for example, at, say, Neymar with Barcelona. Yeah. How far does he have to come back? Not very far. No. Because that's the way that the team plays, much more, much more compact. So I suppose if he wants to use him straight away, that would be the way to do it as, as part of an attacking trident with maybe Aguero through the middle yeah, and Gabriel yeah. just him wide. Yeah, I mean that's um, the, for me. That's that's what I, I expect him to be used as a winger initially, and uh, maybe eventually develop over time. And Aguero has a, has a lot of injury problems in general, so I'm sure there may be some opportunities. And he does seem to have, you know, not a massively similar game, but there does seem to be attributes that do lend himself to that kind of role in general. But one last thing for me, really, uh, before we wrap this up, is I just want to know: Should City fans be excited by these two players, in your humble opinion? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. There's the guy. What's the point of being a Man City fan and not being excited by this? Exactly. Well, these, they, they, these, these, are two, these are two terrific talents. and I, I love Marlos Moreno. Man City now, when he, when he comes over from La Coruña, they're going to be my team in the north now just because, you know, I've been following him <laughs> since, you know. So uh, I, 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 I'm a City fan anyway in that respect because I, I love Aguero. You know, yeah. I saw, I saw him at the age of 17 and it was like, Wow, let's have some of that. <laughs> and, and the way that I follow football, apart from, apart from Tottenham, um, I, I don't tend to have. I tend to follow the individual players, you know, because yeah. the, big, the big privilege of what I get to do is the chance to watch these players before you you do. Yeah. And watch them on the way up, and then I send them over to you. And you know, Steve Walter, can you look after them for me? You know, <laughs> can you look after. Them? But I'll still come and visit from time to time. You know, I'll, I'll have a look. Um, so uh, I'm excited. Yeah, I mean, the, to me, that's part of Fantastic. football that I love. It's great, isn't it? Because I watch a lot of academy football as well. And it's kind of similar. The whole thing, seeing someone before, it's fun, isn't it? To me, that's part of the romanticism of football, seeing this player that maybe isn't necessarily known to some people, but then you get to watch him develop into something magical. And the likes of seeing, for me personally, seeing a Brazilian wonder kid come to Man City, we just don't see this. We had... Uh, we don't. We've not. We've had kind of like Joe, but he wasn't quite the same, really. Maybe not quite as hyped. But it's, this is what I love to see: that old school kind of uh, South American wonder kid, full of flair and exuberance and brilliance. And hopefully, they will become you know one of our own, so to speak. You don't want to see. I don't want to see personally. I mean, I like it, but I don't like seeing sixty million pound signings. I'd much rather you're know, someone like a Marlos Moreno for around eight to ten million or whatever, and then become this world star potentially. I just find that fascinating personally. Um, I could rant all day about it, but it is, it's what football is all about for me. It's a lot of fun. But guys, um, we're going to have to start wrapping up there. Tim, thank you very much, mate. Um, thank you, you very much. Absolutely brilliant. It's been a pleasure to have you on, and hopefully we'll Thanks sign a few more one day, and hopefully we'll get you back on again sometime. And Walter, cheers as ever, mate. Guys, no, go, thank you very much. Go check out Tim. He's on Twitter, Tim underscore Vickery. Obviously, he does there the Will phone in and Sam before and all that, all that stuff. Yeah, follow him. He's brilliant. Uh, yes. Get in the comments. Drop a like on the video, subscribe, and we'll see you soon.